Hey guys, my name is Ismos and today I'm going to be showing you how to create this uh, quadrupsing bridge uh, scene in Blender 2.8. As you can see here, we have a few tracks going over this bridge as it collapses and uh, has some debris falling as well. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I'm going to show you how to set this up and uh, how to give you some tips on how to manage rigid body simulations so that you can have better control over your simulations because sometimes I've noticed uh, it can be a hit and miss uh, to uh, simulate rigid bodies in Blender. So, yeah, let's talk about this. If you want to watch the entire session of me brainstorming this uh, from start to finish, because this is just going to be a, an overview of the entire process, uh, so I might miss a few uh, critical uh, steps. Of that ex I, might, I might miss explaining a few critical steps that you might need to know. So, watching the time lapse will, will at least give you a chance to see those steps in case I miss them. So yeah, let's talk about simulating uh, this. Again, uh, the time lapse is going to be on my second channel, Blender Money. Uh, the link is in the description, so you can watch that. Uh, so the, the key important steps uh, to making good simulations is uh, first to have larger fractures and uh, small fractures. If you have seen collapsing buildings of collapsing bridges, you will notice that uh, you have larger fractures and small fractures. So we're going to do that using the cell fracture add-on. So let's go into a new blend project and add a monkey head. I think I'm going to do a true stories here because I, I won't be able to fit this all the teeth into one video without making it too long. So you need to have, so say we want to fracture this object, uh, this Suzanne head, uh, we can go on and first turn on the cell fracture add-on and you can just go to the add-ons preferences add-on and uh, type in cell fracture turn it on and uh, you can access it and uh, you need to make sure you have the mesh selected object quick selection quick effect and then cell fracture so let me just have a few you can see i had recorded this a few times so let me just restart from scratch and the suzanne head object so fracture I can see that this pop up if you have been following my, my channel you, I've talked about these settings quite a few times but so I'm just going to go through them quickly I'm just mentioning the most important ones so if you want to make a quick fracture just make sure you set change from on particles from on particles to on vertices and then increase the noise value to one uh, this will make sure that uh, your mesh uh, gets uh, fractured correctly otherwise if you don't have any voice uh, noise value uh, it's not going to it's just going to subdivide this divide it in uh, even particles let me just show you here let's give it a moment actually this is not too bad because uh, the shape itself is not that uneven so it's but uh, we're having these issues of meshes protruding out. So let me let me first talk about that first before we even get to the so the fracturing. So let me f just pre add this to that head. When using the cell fracture add-on, it really doesn't like having uh, meshes uh, like this with uh, holes in them. Uh, I'm not sure the right term for it, but uh, in 3D printing. It has a term for it. I'm just forgetting for what that name is. So if you have a mesh where you have a hole like this, uh, it won't fracture correctly. You need to close it by selecting this gap, and hitting F, selecting that, hitting F to connect it like that. Uh, so for these eyes, I'm just going to get rid of them so that we get a bit of fracture. If you want to keep them, then what you would do is uh, Select them, control L. You just make sure that uh, they are connected to the mesh like that, and uh, so that you so that this is I'm not sure what uh, the name is it man hole man hole. I'm, I'm not sure what the right name is called is, but uh, you don't want to have any holes in your mesh, otherwise. Are you going to have issues fracturing the mesh? Maybe then you can uh, bring back these eyes into position. But 
character those are all too many steps uh, for me so i'm just going to delete those eyes and uh, another way to make sure that you don't have you have you don't have those holes in your mesh is that you can go to your overlays just make sure this is recording you can go to your overlays and turn on face orientation uh, this will show you uh, the direction of your normals so blue shows you that uh, the normals are facing <coughs> the normals are facing outside and then red it shows shows you that the normal the normals on the inside so if in any angle you're seeing those red faces it means that uh, your mesh has some holes in it and uh, you need to get rid of that so just delete these faces then fill that in and uh, fill that in so that we don't see any of uh, those so you want to have a mesh to be a solid mesh without any holes in it and then you can use this fracture the cell fracture to work very well so now we can go to object cell fracture now we should subdivide the mesh correctly as it is but uh, again the key to having a nice uh, simulations like this is uh, to have uh, to, to have control over your, over, your, over your fracture and your simulation so usually when an object like this is fracturing the point of impact has more fractures has smaller fractures than the rest of the mesh so for example if uh, we had this fall to the ground then this point of impact would have larger fractures than the other parts of uh, the mesh uh, but I saw that uh, when we use the rigid bodies so when we use the quick cell fracture add-on it just almost evenly subdivides the mesh so to have control over your cell fractures what you need to do is uh, go back to the cell fracture just reduce the count of the cells uh, I'm just going to use four to begin with and uh, I'm going to set up a new collection so that I can keep count or keep track of where my uh, fractures are so I'll just call this layer one and I know these are going to be the larger layers and I can see it has subdivided this and added those fractures into a layer called into a, a collection called layer one you can see we have those four fractures it also keeps the original mesh which you don't want to have so I'll just move that to the extras collection so that I can turn, it, turn that off uh, whenever I want. I'm also turning on, I've also turned on under overlays random colors so that I can see instances of different objects in different colors. You can see our fractures here. Now, so because I know that this area is going to have, um, is going to be the point of impact, what I can do, I can select this section, go back to cell fracture, quick cell, quick effect, and then cell fracture this. I can subdivide this maybe even four times again, but I want to change the layer this this time to layer one one. Whatever you name it, just keep track of where your fractures are. Uh, it will make it easier for you to control. So I can fracture this, but uh, you can see now we are getting a few issues. Uh, this is not really fracturing as I expected it, so or as I wanted. So let me first hide layer one, which was our original fractures, so that I can only look at. Uh, uh, the new fractures and see how they look you can see this is really a mess uh, let me just go back a few bits and do this a few times and i show you why that happened so this is our original first uh, fractures if i solo this go to edit mode and select this ctrl l you can see this mesh is separated from this mesh when the cell fracture atom works, it separates these meshes for some reason. I'm not sure why. And uh, that creates a problem uh, that we had before. Remember, what, before we deleted those eyes to make this a single mesh without any holes, uh, because this is two meshes, if I hide this, or if I move this, this away, because it's not connected to this, if I turn on overlays, and think it's called uh, face orientation you can see that I can see the insides of this face uh, 
uh, because this is this mesh is not connected to this and that is causing the problem so what you want to do is uh, right click merge by distance so that you get rid of any of those vertices now if you select this part L you can see it's one single mesh and if I select this side and try to move that it stays connected meaning that uh, this is a, a mesh with no holes so I want to do this for all the other uh, cells uh, all the other cells you can see if I select this and hit L this mesh is separated from that and that would cause a few problems so I need to right click my by distance so that if I hit L I'm selecting the entire piece as one and uh, it's no longer a mesh without so with with a hole in it let me just turn that off and uh, we have a few pieces here and uh, because we're going to make a lot of fractures we can't just go to one mesh one mesh sorry one fracture one by one and uh, just right click my by distance uh, it's easier to just select all the fractures you have made go to edit mode and then merge by distance this will get rid of any of those uh, issues so that all the meshes are now intact without any holes in them and now if we select this object quick effect cell fracture can use the same settings are uh, going to use yeah this collection now you can see we don't have any issues but remember it keeps the original uh, mesh so I'm just going to select if I hide this these fractures and I'm going to put this in a new collection I wish there was a better way to manage these fractures but uh, just make sure you keep track of the fractures you're making so uh, I'm not, I know that I've subdivided this uh, fracture here so I don't want to use it anymore so I'm just going to have that in uh, let me just call this collection x1 uh, hide that and just use the new fractures I've just used I've just made for that section again if I wanted to say because this is the part that is going to have are the most impact can isolate that but uh, it still has the same issue because this is how the cell fracture add-on works uh, this part here is separated and that is going to cause us a few issues so again right click uh, you need to be in vertex mode for this to work right click merge vertices by distance and get rid of that so that this is connected and uh, we need to do this for all the pieces we have just created so edit mode vertices marked by distance and you can see the number of vertices we have removed so now if I fracture this again object so fracture I will have no issues again I want to keep track of my vertices sorry my new fractures so I've just moved this to layer one two and uh, that has subdivided you can make more subdivisions or more uh, fractures I've just undone that step by increases increasing the salt limit here so I can make this five I'm, I'm trying to keep this this source limit uh, lower uh, so that I can easily you know keep track of the fractures and the money them easily so now hide the new fractures for a second so that I can move this to uh, the extra x1 collection now I can unhide my new fractures you can see again if I wanted to fracture this even further don't forget you need to go to edit mode and uh, get rid of any doubles or any unconnected meshes now I can can even fracture multiple objects by refracture multiple objects by selecting them like that select this, this this object so fracture can increase the limit if you want but I'm okay with that so again okay. you can hide them for a second so that you can get rid of uh, the original fractures you made so just get rid of that you can see that the uh, mesh has more and more fractures so you can make these more and more but uh, after you're done you just have to 
input object rigid body and active and uh, now they are active rigid body so then you can add the flow make it a passive you can see the point of impact now has more fractures small smaller fractures than the, the other areas which makes it far more realistic uh, I think I'll start there in the next video so I'll just show you what we did here let me also show you the kind of layering I did here I still have all the original meshes and to make uh, to make my work easy if you watch the time lapse you'll see that uh, I started with this fracturing this and then duplicated the fractures to make this uh, and then maybe I guess in the next lesson I'll show you how to control your simulation to tell blender which parts you want to fracture first before yeah yeah so thanks for watching I'll see you